In question three on this worksheet, uh, we can't name these as cis or trans because we have three substituents, not just two. Um, so we'll just call them molecules A and B. And although the structures drawn show me what's up or down, it does not indicate at all what's axial or equatorial. So we need to recast these as chair conformations to be able to see if we can get all three of those methyl groups equatorial. In one of those two structures we can, and in the other one we cannot. But I can't tell at all which is which the way they're drawn. So the protocol is for these wedges, these heavy lines here, to become up positions maybe axial, maybe equatorial, but they will be up in my chair. And the uh, dashes there, the ones depicted as receding behind the screen here, those will be in down positions. And so I'll start with uh, A here. And I'll redraw A. And uh, again, I can draw either version of the chair arrangement. And again, I can um, number this ring in a variety of ways, but um, just to kind of keep us straight as to what's connected to what, I'm going to number these as 1, 2, and 4 on molecule A. So I'll let this be number 1 over here. Here will be number 2, and that'll put carbon 4 down here at this end. So again, once I draw my chair, I have to know for these positions um, which ones are going to have axial up carbons, which ones are axial down, so um, what I'm doing right now is part of knowing how to draw a chair confirmation. Um, but the way A is drawn here on the worksheet, um, now I know which bond to put to the methyl group. Carbon 1 has a methyl that's up, and the way I've ch chosen to draw my chair and label my carbons, this one's going to be axial up there'll be a hydrogen at the other bond. Carbon 2 has a down methyl group and now I can say it's a axial down methyl group. Carbon 4 has an up methyl but this is now an equatorial up. So it's being able to tell axial from equatorial. So we've got two axials and an equatorial. That one um, is not terribly stable, but if we flip that ring, then the two things that are axial, this one, A for axial, this one, those will become equatorial, and the equatorial will become axial. So I can get two out of three to be equatorial in the flipped version of this molecule here, but I can't get all three of them to be equatorial. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw B here, and uh, again start off by putting the chair together and um, here um, again I'm not numbering this necessarily to name it I'm just numbering it to keep track of what's connected to what and uh, I'll let that be my number one carbon and now I'll let this one be number two and number four is still going to be over here at the other end and again before I start putting methyl groups I have to know how these bonds are arranged axial and equatorial and up and down Okay, the number two is going to have an axial down, and I'll kind of draw it like this because it's supposed to be behind this this bond at the front of the ring. Okay, and it'll have an equatorial pointing off that way, and then four will have an axial down, equatorial up. Now, when I put in my methyls at carbon one, we've got up. Carbon two, we've got down. Carbon 4 is also down. So I just arbitrarily chose the chair that gives me a very unstable confirmation because all three of these are axial. But if I flip this ring, all three of those will be equatorial, and I'll leave that for you to do. But because it is possible to draw a confirmation with those three methyl groups, all equatorial in molecule B, uh, B is more stable than A. A does not have that option. It has to keep at least one of its groups axial no matter how you draw the chair.